Hey all, I'm back with a new version of my Let's Play session. According to the poll, most of y'all preferred the hybrid version of the Let's Play session, so I have edited down my last session to create a more fluid experience. Let us begin. Last I left off was at the beginning of the Craft World mission. To tackle it, I am using the Rambo build, but instead of an apothecary, I am using the Purgator for the disruption shot, which is the bane of Kadex. And fine, I will bring some healing skulls. And a healer one too. For the opening fight, I decided to play it safe. I put my guys in cover and then used Bakir's frenzy ability in hopes of enraging the first group of enemies. Rise in frenzy! It hit all of them. So being easily excitable, I decided to move up the rest of my troops because I thought these guys would just kill each other. Why won't they? They all got enraged. Not one of these mofos attacked each other. They all gunned for me, afflicting two of my knights with plague and forcing me to use early heals. God, I hate this affliction. So I went full Rambo on their ass and deleted them real quick. We As ordered. The, the second fight, I wanted to give Kartha a second chance and tried the dominate ability, but I forgot that it needs line of sight, leaving Kartha in a dangerous situation. Not a great start to a mission that I have already failed once. Luckily, I went full Rambo and stabilized the situation real quick. I am his will. third engagement, I turn off the part of my brain that always want to experiment and charge in with the full fury of the Emperor's wrath, eliminating them all in a single turn. For the Order of Malleus! Now the hard part of the mission. Because I triggered the Craftful mission so early, I luckily won't have to deal with the Chaos Terminators, which are really dangerous in this mission. But as I went full Rambo on the first group, I had a dreadful realization. In the past, I have always done this mission with the research ability that rewards one willpower every warp surge. Warp surges in this mission happen almost every second turn, but because of these surges, I can basically go full Rambo at least four or five times, which makes dealing with all the reinforcements a hell of a lot easier. However, since I rushed to unlock this mission, I didn't have a way to replenish my willpower, along with how underleveled my Jessicars were and every other Nurgle chump having the drained willpower mutation, I would be lucky if I got to go full Rambo 
even three times. Even worse, because everyone is pretty low level, my Rambo wasn't able to kill the opening group in a single turn. Already I knew that there was a very high chance that I will fail this mission. Strong we shall stand. I sense the enemy converges. Inevitable. You must withdraw immediately, Inquisitor. Strike for At your command. Down! Affirmative. Making matters even worse, the thing I hate the most about the current state of the game happened, with a plague zone appearing right on top of my knights. Why is this still a thing? Nothing about dealing with this makes the game fun or challenging in any way. It is just punishing the player for the sake of punishing the player. Anyway, Kadex appeared so I got ready to engage him. Stack all of the honor the chapter abilities on my interceptor and of course. Death to the enemy. Feel the bite of my sword! Outside of Hammerhand, my interceptor only crit once. What was even the point of equipping him with the cheat hammer and the cheat book if I'm getting fewer crits than with the base 10 to 15% chance that they already have? This basically drained all of his action points, leaving the Juster Cards to deal with the horde of plague bearers by themselves. I will say this, I messed up by not equipping my Juster Cards with Power Swords. I knew that this mission usually has a ton of plague bearers and that I would be forced to tank them. Even a 50% chance to parry would have been better than the Thunder Hammers, which are pretty useless without willpower. Before dying, Kadex did send one of my Juster Cards behind the enemy lines and on the other side of the plague zone. The Healer Skull kept him alive for a bit, but his situation kept getting worse. The Interceptor moved in to assist, but I still have 5 turns left, and most of my guys were out of willpower. Keeping them alive was going to be a challenge. Flank, a freaking melter gun wielding space marine spawned. The worst possible enemy showed up. I decided that I would let Iolantis just tank these two and got my interceptor out. My purgator desperately tried to support the Jester car protecting Vakir, who was about to be battered by two plate bearers. My right flank was completely open and had multiple bearers running down the ramp. I decapitated one in hopes that for once the craze would work in my favor. My focus fails me. Launch in on the Empire. It did a small victory. <laughs> Pathetic. 
more corpses join the ranks. We rejoice. We bring Nurgle's gifts. The plague bearers were closing in on Bakir, but by some miracle, I was able to generate enough willpower to get one more on the chapter in and reinforce Wakir with my interceptor. Firing on Strike home. Lithicus fails me. Ready to serve. Moving now. Finally, a decent and much needed crit. But why does everyone have so much health? <sighs> Maybe the purging mutation skills might actually be viable now. I tried to delay Iolanta's demise for as long as I could, but this resulted in Boris getting heavily punished. <laughs> My last healing skull fixes up the interceptor, and for once, I am actually kind of glad I brought a couple of these. I am his will. Feel the bite of my sword. The hundred percent chance to respawn on the plague bearer has become a really big drain on AP points in this new update. With haste, it will be done. But luckily, my interceptor remembered how to crit again. You have been judged! And the extra points allowed me to disarm one of the marines on the right. Fortunately, the plague squatter marines aren't very aggressive, and they mostly ignore Fakir and refuse to move past a certain point. <laughs> The plague bearers, on the other hand, are very aggressive, and they will make a beeline for Wakir. So to intercept the two coming from the left side, I teleported the interceptor right at the base of the staircase to act as bait. This position also shields him from line of sight of the other marines in the area, but I fear he might not survive the next turn. Another few crits allowed me to dispose of one of the plague bearers, which does get my hopes up though. Vengeance! Now with one turn remaining, the only threats left are the Plague Marines. So to keep them from killing Vakir, I armor up Iolanthus and leave him as a sacrificial lamb out in the open for all of them to shoot. And to prevent the Nurgle forces from getting a full surround on Vakir, I position the Purgator right next to her to occupy one of the two possible melee spots. <laughs>
plan works, and I successfully completed the mission. But I lost both my Justice cards. They will be out of commission for a while, leaving me with a very weakened and hodgepodge of a team. I grab tier 2 grenades as a reward and level up the Purgator and the Interceptor. Before I can even take stock of my situation, I get hit by a warp storm disturbance because I tried to leave the Kraftful and cause all of my knights to get wounded. The negative 10 wound penalty meant that for the next few bloom spawnings, I will have to tackle the missions with marines whose health ranges from 5 to 8. I cannot even get touched in the next mission. Because of that, I chose the easiest mission I could accomplish rather than based on what I needed. On the way to the mission, the level 2 shift speed upgrade got completed. And because I was low on servitors, I decided to upgrade the augmentation chamber. For the mission comp, I add in the apothecary and the second interceptor to the squad and start the mission. I picked this mission because it was the closest and the glorious deed was easy to accomplish. My guys can't take a lot of hits, so I have to be super careful. The first enemy group has the blight hauler with a few cultists. I snipe off the heavy stubber because I don't want them to pin any of my guys and then move my team back to lure the enemy in. I am with you. Flawlessly. This will fuel the mind. Give me something. Face me. In an instant. Fall. The second group has a lot of pox walkers, which the purgator is an expert in taking out. But they also have a lot of cultists. And because of how weak my guys are right now, I couldn't risk capturing the seed. Even though yellow is one of the most important seeds to stockpile. Strive. I blew everything away, but there were still too many of them, resulting in one of my interceptors to take some damage. Your duty is to extract the seeds, not destroy them. With alacrity! Ah! Another falls to the Knights of Titan! Moving swiftly. Ah! Gliding through the wind. The third group comprised only of two units, and so it's much easier to dispatch. Your end is near! I've claimed a sea. Vengeance! The fourth and final group was pretty well entrenched, but with the warp speed buff, the interceptors turned into some terrifying creatures. is near. Down! The reinforcements weren't much of a threat either and I was able to eliminate all of them. I decided to grab this hammer even though I do not like any of its stats or abilities. But I need to transition to 5 damage weapons like yesterday and need something for my second interceptor. So out of desperation I grabbed it. The cheat hammer is great in the early game but loses its power in the mid game. At least until it is fully upgraded and that will take a while. I level up both my interceptors and finally start the research on gates of infinity and then continue on with the campaign until I'll unlock the final Dreadnought mission. On my way to the Dreadnought mission, I get hit by an intervention event that is both a blessing 
and a curse. It will heal all of my troops, but kill one of them. I could stand to lose all except Storm, who is the Rambo of the Rambo build. But I cannot go into the Dreadnought mission this heavily wounded. So after praying to every single deity in and outside of the Warhammer universe, I picked the risky surgery option. And it worked! Although I lost the weaker interceptor, everyone else was restored back to full fighting strength. Finally, some good luck. I parked the ship on the Dreadnought mission and ended my session. Next episode, I will unlock the Dreadnought and test out the build I am calling MLRS. Basically, I will be using the Dreadnought as a long range missile launching artillery piece. Hopefully it will work. Please work. So until then, peace.